I think um, Akim added grain quality to the post harvest because he saw my hand go up. <laughs> you get scared, yeah. <laughs> but I just um, wanted to respond a bit to Ed and just put another thing up. That, okay, when we get to yield, yield is one thing, but that's not what rice is. Rice is what's on the plate and what you eat. So when you take the hull off, you can lose all, you can use a, lose a huge proportion of that yield due to pre-harvest management and post-harvest, or pre-harvest management, pre-harvest conditions, environmental conditions, and post-harvest <coughs> losses. And it's really, really difficult to map that into this process. And this is why you haven't seen the quality uh, component, qualities that has been included in this, but we, it's really difficult to map that into uh, this process and how we quantify it. And how we quantify it per ecosystem, do we quantify it on market prices, market price gains, but then when you put more, if you get higher yield in higher quality rice, you have more rice, and then that's going to have an effect on market price again. And so it's all, it's a really very difficult process to um, capture all the components into what will end up on people's plates. Yep. Uh, okay, search. Thank you. Serge Savary from Erie. Uh, I'd like to come back to the point which was Rose uh, about the uncertainty of estimates, because I think this is a very important uh, element. And uh, uh, the first presentation of this session by Dr. Uh, Yagni uh, was based on uh, farmers' interviews. Uh, the exercise uh, conducted at ERI, on the other hand, is based on scientists' uh, evaluations. And I think that the, the, the both approaches have their own values uh, in the sense that they, they perhaps may help us address the issue of adoption. Uh, for instance, if there is discrepancy between what the scientist sees and what the farmer perceives, uh, what the farmer perceives is a fact and it's, it's an indication of potential adoption of whatever technology might be available to address that particular problem. And so that, that may be important in, in addressing this kind of uncertainty, which is, the adoption aspect is the most, uh, we felt that the, 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 the uncertainty was primarily uh, uh, attached with, with, the, with the adoption element. So I think that that has a lot of value in, in itself. Then again, uh, the scientist's uh, point of view is, is not to be dismissed either because it, there, there are elements that farmers simply cannot see, cannot perceive, and, and I can hear the argument of saying, oh well, if you bring a soil scientist there, then it will be a soil science problem. If you bring a plant pathologist there, then it will be. Yes, but th th these things are, uh, I think we have been uh, carefully taking, taking care of those, of those uh, parochial point of views during the process. Yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe maybe uh, one little addition to that, because uh, uh, the so what we will try to do uh, is to very carefully document all of the assumptions being made, and when it's mean being made public for for external comments and reviews and input, we want to be able to document why we come up with that number, you know, um, and. Uh, in, in some cases, we will be able to link it to a clear, you know, quantitative or unbiased uh, set of data or data of publications. You know. In other cases, we will not be able to do this. We will just say, okay, this is what the five guys came up with, or girls, you know, if there are some involved. You know. so, and I think. Uh, what, 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 I, what is really important is to make these things as transparent as possible. Yeah? So that we all know, okay, this is what we know, and this is what we don't know. You know so. And then, I'm getting, coming back to Donald Rumsfeld, it seems, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's this process. Yeah? So we would certainly then uh, like to open this up uh, so that it isn't just the view of uh, uh, a, a small group of eerie scientists you know, and that we can also benefit from other information and data that other people may have. You know, so it's a continuous process. Um, but we have some more time, we can still discuss a little bit more. No more questions.
questions? There has to be some questions. Or... Ali. I, I also, while he's getting the microphone, I see a few people from the private sector in the room here. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting a comment from her, Kiblemont, from Syngenta, for example, how you do these kind of exercises. Yes, I was just curious about the weak competitiveness there and the second there. What is the, and coming from the variety, can you say there is another set of uh, estimate which was which you go against the server? Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. I, yeah, so in, in terms of the weak competitive varieties, um, there's, uh, so we have one, one set of estimates, I mean they've been produced by different scientists basically, and I, I think we, we still haven't had a chance yet to sit down and really resolve the different estimates, so uh, I pulled in the one that was comprehensive, one, one set of estimates was targeted to uh, direct seeded systems only, and the other was comprehensive to all systems. So for the purpose of this, I just pulled in the estimate that's comprehensive to all systems. Uh, but this is, again, another area where we have to sit down and have an internal discussion and, and see where we really stand. It's a, this, is a, this is, since it is a process that's ongoing, there are still, we have a gradient of things that are resolved and some things that are still a little bit less resolved. Okay, I see. Herf, do you have a microphone there? Yes, okay. thanks, uh, Akim. Um, maybe just uh, a couple of comments. Uh, I think we are struggling as well to, uh, to do this type of uh, prospective uh, analysis. Whatever you do, the only thing you know is that you are going to be wrong in 20, 30 years. That's for sure. But at least the value of and the merit of doing such an exercise is really force you to uh, look at the trends and the uncertainties as it has been mentioned several times. So. What we try to do internally, uh, without disclosing any uh, secret in, uh, in terms of information here, is just uh, working with kind of scenario planning, doing uh, different scenarios based upon the trends and, and the uncertainties that we have in this uh, overall market. Looking at all the parameters that you mentioned, uh, if, for instance, we believe, and I've seen a lot of papers and discussion around direct seeding over the last few days, that direct seeding is going to be a trend, then we need to understand what does it mean and what will be the consequence of that because that's going to drive uh, the different systems that's going to change the crop management in, in many areas for, for farmers in many, in many places in, in Asia so once we have identified these uh, trends and uncertainties we can also elaborate some scenarios and based upon these scenarios what we work now more and more we try to avoid to slice the solutions according to what we are working on, but we try to work much more on a system base and, and, and to look at that system, how the system will work and, and what are the consequences for, for the, the crop management itself. Starting basically from, from the planting to uh, post-harvest, as it has been mentioned. So that's basically what, what we try to, to achieve. Of course, even though we are sometimes working particularly on a specific area, like your breeding, for instance, um, we cannot cover all the other aspects of the crop management, so that's why we are also working on partnership with uh, with you, <laughs> indeed. But we try to understand also the consequence of that. So that's that's how we do it. It's it's a new exercise as well. We do not believe that we have the answer uh, alone, and that's also why we want to uh, to partner and I'm pretty glad so that you launched this uh, global rice uh, science, science science partnership initiative. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, any other uh, comments? We still have some time. Ali, you have another question? Okay. Uh, uh, I did see well, I did not see the birds. And you uh, know, in our data and most of what I see here from Africa, bird is uh, mm -hmm. very important. First, was it this not? Was it not important, or as what I hear that scientists do not want to mm -hmm. talk of birth because they don't have a solution for it? Yeah, I think I want to show two slides because um, I think it's relevant now.
quickly want to show where, where are we now? Because um, um, to, to, to give a more complete overview so that we're not missing out uh, things. So these are the type of things that we have identified as solutions, yield potential. So we talked about improved inbred hybrid C4. But here are some of the other things that in red that we still need to do. So just to make complete, here are the some of the quality aspects that Melissa called, uh, talked about, but even we think about byproducts, biochar, um, feed straw, etc. Um, resource use efficiency, um, the whole post-harvest thing, I didn't have time to mention that, but we're looking at drying, um, milling, from small-scale village milling to large-scale business models, learning alliances, uh, hermetic ring storage, lace leveling. So there are still a number of technologies, potential solutions in red here that we are going through. Um, we didn't talk at all about these abiotic constraints, all the potential solutions for droughts, emergence, salinity, interaction, high temperature, low temperature, these problem soils that Aliu, you mentioned coming out of your um, review. Um, and finally, um, the biotic ones, this is in black what we have covered, the diseases, the pests, we have rodents, weeds, and here in it you see nematodes, snail and birds. So, um, what we, we haven't tackled them yet, because A, we, we don't have a lot of in-house um, knowledge on them, so we need to think how are we going to tackle them, get some sense of the importance of these constraints, their occurrences, um, and then what are potential solutions. Um, and all these ones in red, I'm sure, are not even exhaustive yet. So I hope that this provides a more complete overview of some of the technologies and at least my apologies for not having shown them before. Good, thanks for this clarification. So, this is your final chance to ask a question or to make a comment. Okay, Robert. Thank you, Akim. Robert Habib, uh, Sierra de France. I would like to add a comment on the comment made by our colleague from the private sector. On the difference between the two exercises, uh, as far as I understood, this exercise you show us uh, is an assessment exercise. And you consider factors by factors to try to estimate what could be the future with a given uh, probability, let's say. In a foresight exercise, uh, the future is, cannot be known. And what you do, you build scenarios in a systemic way, and so you combine factors all together. For instance, uh, is it possible that uh, mm, breathing innovation uh, can uh, be applied in the field? And what are the, uh, the all technical uh, problems that has to be solved? Technical, social, cultural problems all together. And the foresight exercise, you do not try to predict the future, but you try to build scenarios to be able to build the future according to what you want to uh, appear. So I think it's, they are very, two very different exercises, and they can gain by be combined. Want to comment on this, David? Uh, yeah, we, we have, uh, in this we have some use of scenarios. Uh, we will do it in terms of parameters. Uh, taking into account uh, uncertainty about specific parameters. Um, so we will do it, for example, in terms of uh, different, the uh, different higher and lower um, expected adoption rates and things like this. So we have scenarios for comparing specific aspects. But in the end, we, we really do need to have some sort of an idea about the central tendency of the future in order to make decisions. So we, we we are, don't want to get too elaborate in terms of scenarios um, because we, we do, in the end, want to be able to say something about what is most likely, what is what the best uh, uh, information upon which to base a decision is. So, but we will have some, some use of scenarios. We may have some use of scenarios in terms of, for example, actual yield trends as well. We have uh, those trends uh, projected out to 2035 and to what degree we think will... The,